Thank I do you. have an audio version of it. I apologize. Great. No, it's okay. I, I, it's just, all of you. I I'm used to hearing that little lady say, you know, recording in progress. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't hear the nice little lady. Okay, I, I'm sorry. Um, I need to talk about something serious, so I don't mean to joke. Um, as Jeremy uh, mentioned, um, uh, Jeremy, Tony, and I all attended um, a wake yesterday for one of uh, a Flemington resident. Um, his name was Santiago. Felix Reyes Olea, and um, his family's been um, residents of Flemington Borough for over 30 years. Um, and he was the breadwinner of their family, um, a very large family. So I just ask everybody to keep um, keep their family in your prayers and uh, donations to assist the family with the financial burdens of expenses related to the funeral are, are appreciated and information can be found on the Holcomb Fisher website. Um, under under Mr. Reyes or Leo's um, obituary page. So, um, uh, like I said, please keep this family in the in your prayers. Um, Jeremy mentioned um, uh, in his police report um, that the police have been wanting to um, for a long time do some um, uh, outreach with with pedestrian and bike safety. So, um, hopefully, this man's death will. Um, uh, result in some promotion of that and, and and if it helps one person that's a good thing um the other uh two items that i am assigned is um schools um uh fleming american school district had their reorg meeting um last week and their next meeting is on january 23rd and hundred and seven i'm sorry i shouldn't say Flemington American School District is having their reorg meeting right now simultaneous to our meeting and their next meeting is January 23rd, which is also simultaneous to our meetings, which is the norm. Um, Hunter and Central had their reorg meeting last week, and the recording is available online for review. And I'll be reaching out to the, the borough board of ed reps and each district superintendent to introduce myself. And I know that Liz and I had a nice chat. She kind of filled me in on being a, a school um, liaison, and uh, she and I are going to be working on that committee together. So I'm looking forward to doing that. Um, and same thing goes with Park and Rec. Um, uh, I'm part of my campaign was a uh, platform was that I'd like to see some improvements done to, to come here again. So I'm really grateful to the mayor to be put on that uh, as a liaison and have that opportunity to do some good there. And that's my report. Thank you, Ms. Rosetti. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I'm going to keep this brief. I, I do echo some of the things that have already been brought up tonight. Uh, my condolences for the bicyclists. Um, and then I appreciate Tony bringing up that topic with that appointment that has been weighing on my mind as well. Um, and then just echoing Kim, I am happy to see. I hope that we can continue to move forward um, united. I am happy um, to see that both last meeting last week and, and today, I feel like I just saw y'all, um, but I am so happy to see so many people in the audience as well. I appreciate the community becoming so involved. Um, I just wanted to express that. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Denny. Um, Going to go and have an administrator's report. Oh, Kim, you did say that, right? Yes, yeah, yeah, I apologize. Hey, so um, pet renewal, pet license renewals. Um, and new applications for pet licenses are due January 31st, but to avoid a late penalty fee. Last year, we did 323 licenses, and we expect more this year. Um, the housing landlord registration for rental properties letter, the letter for that, um, has been sent, uh, accompanied by the business insurance registration letter for those who have not yet registered. To date, we've had collected more than 400 business insurance certificates, which makes up a little bit more than half of uh, of the businesses of which we sent out. So it's going well. Um, retail food license renewals and new applications are now being accepted. Last year, we had over 100. And uh, I just want to point out that uh, um, Allison Purcell, who works in this office, is the one who processes all of these, as well as supporting construction. So she does an amazing job. Mm -hmm. okay. Um, we'll be doing another mailing communication regarding lead and galvanized pipes for properties in the borough. Uh, for those who may not know, uh, the state has mandated that uh, water systems replace any lead and galvanized pipes in their system. If uh, you have a question, um, you can go to our website, uh, fill out a survey. There are pictures that help you understand uh, what it is. Um, it's good to get ahead of it. Uh, 
Let's see. Oh, and we that uh, mailing this time around will be in both English and Spanish. One and then the other side. Uh, Daniel's law goes into effect January 13th. So Daniel's law um, was uh, written after a judge's son was killed. Um, so all judges, prosecutors, and law enforcement and their family that lives under the same roof have the ability to register uh, under Daniel's law and uh, their information has to be pulled from public records, from public facing records. Um, for us, the Teamsters contract needs immediate attention. So if we can put that um, on the front burner, that would be great. Um, 200 Main Street work has begun uh, on the renovations on the uh, upper floor. So that's good news. Uh, due to sanitary sewer overflows occurring to Flemington, um, the EPA will be issuing uh, administrative consent order to the Flemington Borough. Uh, there's no monetary fine associated with the administrative consent order, but it will require creating an action plan and supplying it to the EPA in the 60 days detailing how we will eliminate the overflow. We did ask for an extension. Uh, this, is a, this is a pretty big issue. And uh, I, I'm hoping that we can have someone come in on one of our work sessions to discuss in a little bit more detail. Yeah, I think on the 23rd, we should have um, the new sewer engineer come in with the uh, with Jerry Harris as well. Um, talk about it to the council. Great. Um, we will be discussing the flood paint ordinance and cannabis licensing during the work session tonight. Um, and uh, just a quick report: the water main uh, burst uh, near the high school, and um, our team and the contractor came in, and less than twenty four hours later, we had it fixed, and it did not affect. Uh, the operating hours at school. So uh, again, public works, we have one of the best teams in the county. So just keep that in mind. And that's in my report. Thank you, Administrator. All right, it's now time for our first public comment uh, session. If you have anything you want to bring to the council attention or say, um, please just step up to the microphone. Please give us your name and your municipality, not your address because of Janice Law. So just your name and your municipality is fine. Whoever wants to go first. <clears throat> Good evening. Uh, Mark Herbert, Clemson Borough. Uh, I'll do that. Yeah. I'm going to. Yeah. Thank you very much. I uh, just wanted to say congratulations on your election, Mayor, uh, and your council members, and my neighbors. Um, I'm here, uh, known for my Mr. Rogers sign in my front yard. Um, wanted to express um, some of that sentiment in response to uh, the proposed appointment of James Weintraub to the planning board um, and voice my objection to it. Um, as somebody who had seen the rhetoric and the hatred that's been spewed online uh, from him and sparred with him verbally, personally, um, it's a uh, work we're in a position, I think, with new leadership to Head in a new direction, away from controversy, away from division, and uh, I think bringing him into the fold. I mean, we had the chance to be elected and have the fewest votes of anyone at 506 <laughs> votes of all candidates available. Clinton said no, um, and I'm here to repeat that. So, thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Herbert. Anything else? <laughs> Hi, I'm Adrian Fusaro. I live in the borough of Flemington. Um, Mr. Parker, thank you very much. I'm in 100% agreement. Um, I have screenshots. I can read through them all. They're pretty abrasive from calling everybody a fat F word, uh, retards. Um, evidently, all Democrats are uh, American hating fascists. And this is from a man who on his campaign literature wrote uh, that the former council and the former mayor were divisive and dishonest, and he ran under the greater good. That was what was on your literature, which as we all know, I hope, maybe I'll educate you, was coined by Giovanni Gentili, who was the instructor of Italian fascism. And he co-wrote the book with Benito Mussolini. Really rich, very rich 
It's absolutely rich that you would call, yeah, smirk. Keep smirking, sir, because it's beyond the pale. Not only I am friends with Mr. Parker, the fact that someone would come to his house shielded by his two children wearing a rainbow hat was beyond abrasive. This man is not fit, not fit to be on any board, on any committee in this community. Now, I'm hearing it's too late. We're stuck with him. We're stuck with him. But what happened to that concept of unity? I'm not a member of the gay, lesbian, bigender, bisexual, transgender, intersect community. But the idea that someone, anyone in this borough would have to read that, think that, or work with this gentleman on any board is just beyond pale. It's beyond pale to me. Shame on us. Anybody else? Mayor Council, uh, Mayor Carroll, Council Bill Runs, Huntington Borough. Honestly, Mr. Humphrey, I'm not sure if this is the time I need to bring up my question, but I'm going to ask the council to reconsider uh, the vote that occurred on October 24th at 7.30 regarding the uh, North Place and Parkland uh, construction work. And the reason I'm going to do that is uh, I, myself, and my neighbor, Mr. Rivera, who owns Southern North Place, never got notification. And uh, since I didn't get the notification, we want an opportunity to bring this forward. And I understand, again, with the help of Mr. Humphrey there, that um, in order for me to really address this issue, I guess I'm on a time limit here. So I wasn't sure if this is the right time to present it. I need to ask the council to reconsider another, is it a working session or a town meeting? For the members of the people that live in that area, because there's really only eight people, eight houses. And of the eight houses, only four houses are going to be affected by this construction. Plus, the construction that occurred on that street actually occurred only 60 years ago. I don't know what to do at this point. I'm asking the council if they reconsider. Are you looking to have the direction of the one we wrote? Well, this first? is actually twofold. The, the direction uh, is kind of one issue. If I have to live with a uh, direction, the reversal would have been away from where the children are. I have pictures of the amount of buses that come in at morning, lunchtime, and evening, and the amount of children that are there. Um, the direction is one issue because it was going towards uh, Hunter Hill Apartments, Garden Lane, and there's a lot of children there. Um, it would have been better if it did go the opposite way because there are no children at the other end. That's one thing. As far as the construction, um, the construction for that area, again, was done only like 60 years ago. You don't have all the old drainage system. In fact, one of the pictures I have shows all the regular piping that was used six up out of my yard. My yard, another yard, and the other four are all going to Portland or North Maine. So there's only four houses that they need to do dig up. You know, there's really nothing wrong with that road. There are other people that would like to meet at that meeting. Uh, unfortunately, I got no notice. And neither did Mr. Rivera. Unfortunately, uh, if I'm not mistaken, Mr. Humphrey, let me know if I'm correct on this. The, the document that you hand delivered to me here was placed in the mailbox, I think. Correct? Yes. Okay. Did you ever mail any out with a stamp on it? Yes. Okay. Did you mail it to Mr. Rivera? They were mailed to everybody on the uh, at an address of, of North Place and for Corcoran. Okay. What was accompanied with was an incorrect ordinance. So what was hand delivered was the same mailing with the correct ordinance. Okay, because when we last talked, you said it was put in the mailbox. Yes, the second one. The first one was mailed to everyone who had an address of North Place and Corcoran. Okay. And the second one was for the town meeting? No, both were for the same thing. Oh, Just okay. one was to correct an incorrect order. Anyway, this included. is my, my concern. I'd like to see if the council would consider it so that myself and the neighbors can come forward. <laughs> Apparently, the state puts guidelines that says once you start this construction or for the purpose of the money, you're going to have to put sidewalks in. And both of our one side really has no land to take. I have an old uh, stone wall there, which I have to talk with the engineers that gets to that point. The other issue is. Um, Nobody had a chance to speak at the meeting. And apparently no one from that area, myself, as well as a couple other people were not present. 
Where, where's what's the status of this with the engineer and the, the right. construction? It hasn't gone out to bid or anything yet. Is it? No, it's not. So it's not too late to talk about this again if the council's willing to. Yeah, I could check with the engineer tomorrow to see exactly where we are with that. But no, we have not gone out to the bid for it yet. Okay. I don't believe we put together full bid specs on. So, so the one issue is the currently it's designed to be one way going south to north, heading towards Hunter Hills. At the very least, you'd like to see that reversed. That, and the, that, if anything, get that reversed. And the other is, issue is, is the actual construction. You don't think it's road. necessary at I all. I don't think it's necessary. In fact, the money that you might get from the state would be better off used at Church Street to the circle where the road is horrible there. Um, oh, that, that that's already. Oh, okay. Well, then I won't address that. Mr. Humphrey has been very helpful with me on this whole issue, uh, but there's really no drainage other than four houses on that street, and they're going to dig it up just to be forced to put sidewalks in for a prop, uh, an area that's not one of the oldest areas. That road was originally a dirt road, and when my neighbor, Martha, was there, she had told me approximately 55 to 61 is when the house is converted to, or the road is converted to tar. So I'm just asking the council to reconsider this and give us an opportunity to come before you all and start to talk further about this, if need be. Can I just add, I know it was discussed at the DPW meeting. The reason that we wanted to go um, north place to have it come down towards is because of the plowing in the, in the wintertime. They thought it would be too difficult to plow up north place. It would be easier for them to plow down north place. I've lived there since 1978. Parts have lived there since 1955. I'm, I'm just saying, you know, they plow either way, and we all try to work together to help our neighbors and the street as well. Um, I would not ever object to what the council does here. I, I, I'm law abiding. It's just that my concern is the children. The children is our future. All it takes is one accident to hit one of those buses for all the children that are there. Normally, the children that are on that street corner are now at Allen Street. So somehow there might have been a minor adjustment of where they're picking up the children. But we're talking a lot of children. So uh, that was my only concern. I'm, the, I'm a school bus driver for the district. Mm -hmm. So I'm well aware of how many children there. I have picked up at North right. Place and North So that Main was street. the only reason for suggesting to go to the opposite way. Right. Um, the other issue too is we did have somebody come to a council meeting because we were originally going to have the traffic go from Park yep. to yeah, Allen. That was on, yeah, she was on court, right? Right, she was on court. So okay. she somehow knew of the meeting that we had and came and discussed at the public hearing. Um, and that she had requested, the reason we were going to have the traffic go that way, so this way. Or, right? Is that how we were originally had? suggested it. She's the one who asked if we would reverse it. We would, that we would reverse yeah. it. So we, there somehow reverse, we're, reverse Corcoran. Corcoran, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Park. Reverse right. Corcoran. Because if you park to Allen. Right. right. That would, that, I'm, I'm talking. I understand that, regarding. but the notification, I believe, went out to everybody at the same time. Right. So I guess there were some people that were notified. I don't understand why oh, it, it didn't. Yeah, you know, it was when you discussed this with GPW. Was there uh, is there a subsurface issue? Is there a sewer line issue on North Place specifically that this whole road is supposed to be maintained? I think the main focus was Corcoran, and it was if we're doing Corcoran room, especially if we're doing one way on Corcoran, we need to address North Place as well. So maybe we should talk to the engineer about this um, yeah, and sorry. a little bit more. Um, who designed it to see if really is that necessary. It's, I believe there's an issue with the fire hydrant on Corcoran. But I don't know, what about North? No, no, like, I'm not saying Corcoran is not necessary. Right. I'm just questioning whether we really need to do it. I'm not, I'm not sure. Okay. The, if it hasn't been put out to bid at all, then we might as well. Right, we, we can I ask one really in favor of the council as well as Mr. Oh, wow, you're really pushing. I know. <laughs> this, this is very simple. Um, you all probably know that the mailboxes are federal, governed by the federal government. Mm -hmm. Any mailboxes, you're not entitled to put anything in my mailbox without it going to the postmaster. The uh, postmaster inspector could be given a uh, request of complaint, stuff like that. So if it's mailed out, it's not an issue. If it's placed in the mailbox, you have no authority to put anything in my mailbox. So just as a reminder, I ask that you don't. I just uh, and I I knew that, but it was raining that day. Mm -hmm. It was pouring. Mr. Hoffman, you, you went so good to me. So. <laughs> I'm not complaining about it. For all you that here, 
this. I very rarely come to the meetings. I trust the council and I trust everybody else here and the mayors, even the past mayor. I left it up to them. This is an issue that I'm more concerned about the kids for one, the two, the fact that they're going to force us to have sidewalk there for amount of money that we don't really need. You give me the tar, I'll tar the road myself. It's all I need. I'll pick up the brush and you give me the tar. We thought you were just going to tar it over. Just to fix it up. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Friends. Anybody else? You don't have to get up. <laughs> I'll stand on my tiptoes. I'm Kristen Cook. I live in Flemington Borough. I just wanted to say that I came here tonight uh, for the same reason of what Mr. Parker said and a few of the other people that I'm very disappointed in the um, appointment of Mr. Parker Trout. I, I don't think he represents Flemington and um, that's it. I'm really disappointed. And I'm sorry because I'm excited. You know, anytime there's a new administration, even if I didn't vote for you, I I want to support you and I want I want our, our town to keep going, as Kim said earlier. And um starting off on a really bad foot in my opinion because of this. So that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? James Weintraub, Flemington Borough. Uh, just want to make some comments after my name uh, brought up here. Reaction to some of these allegations about hatred, which I think is, is the farthest thing from the truth. Um, unfortunately, political ideology is such in this country that if you disagree on a philosophical level, then there are some who are called hateful or racist or homophobic or bigoted. And I really wish that we could have more substantive conversations uh, moving forward. And um, I look forward to serving this community for the next four years. Thank you. But I'm going to comment on that because here's the thing. It has nothing to do with your political ideology. It has nothing to do with that. You hurt people. You degraded people. You stop. Just stop. Stop. I'm a minority and I'm gay. Mere fact that you would write something in on a Facebook page that shows hatred that isolates a person so that everybody else, you did, you mm -hmm. did do it. No, I did not. You did. We'll, we'll pull it. We'll pull it. No. You absolutely. I had my words minced, Councilman Parker. It's I was it's attacked it's by somebody. Did, and it did you not? Did you not? And it was completely false. Did you not put it in writing? Did, yes, what's in writing. writing? Yes or no? Is it on Facebook? What? The comment about the, the flag and the woman, the, the, the There's no the comment friends. about the flag. Well, there's no comment about Where am I flag? getting this? Where am I getting this? Then what I'm still to show you this exactly what you're saying. What did you say? Because that I am a Jewish man. I have Amerasian children and Asian wife. I am married like to a white guy. I have so what? Where are we going with that? I understand that all the hatred against Asians that's been going on. I understand, you know, the problems we have in the put community. It in writing. James, you put it in writing. I did not. You I okay. did not. I well, did not. Okay. Well, point to anyone's race. I never change. pointed to anybody's sexuality ever. I ever. You put it to a house that the person lives in. The person's house is their cover photo. But you. It's the cover guess. photo. Okay. So let me go back. And to the you. house is very big. Let me go back to. Perception. I don't have. Let me go back to perception. I don't have a just. Uh, so land in front of my Just listen to me. Listen and learn. I'm going to teach you something. Perception is a son of a gun. If I perceive that you attacked me, it's true to me. Even if you don't think it's true, it's true to me. Well, let me give you the opportunity stop, to read stop, it. Please, Mr. Please, 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 please no, excuse me. I'm, I'm giving him something. Just let me finish my statement. If I perceive it's true to me, it's true to me. The point of it is, if it's not true, then you need to change your behavior. But that person and a lot of people in this community, I'm just telling you, think that that's what you did. So if it's not true and it's their perception, then the question is, how do you clean that up? That's what you really should be talking about. How do you clean that up so it changes the perception? Because if you're not going to do that, then it stays the same and people have the same perception of you. 
There are many people who have a perception of others posting in this room, I'm sure, that is 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 equally as I'm asking about you. Stop about no, everybody. Don't we're terrible. Okay. Gentlemen, what gentlemen, gentlemen stop, no, Mr. What Parker, this is a comment period from the public, and he is entitled to his comments. I'm, I'm fine. Okay, I'm, so I'm, I'm being cast in, in, in a really unfair life. That's all I have to say. Members of the public, he did not make comments when you were making comments, so please be we're going to do respect to that with both sides. I'm sorry. So, all right, is there anything else from anybody else from the public? I just really encourage people to have dialogues and not come to conclusions. I personally don't do social media, I find it abhorrent. I find it to be the underlying problem with society on both sides of the aisle today, from a national level all the way down to the borough. I choose not to read it. I choose not to participate in it. Um, I really encourage everybody to do the same because it really is, to me, the center of all dialogue problems in this country. Anybody else from the public? If not, is anybody online need to speak? If so, raise your hand. Anybody? Okay, thank you very much. All right, we're moving on to approval of minutes uh, for December 12th, the regular council meeting. Can I have a motion, please? I'll move. Tony, I'll yeah. second. Uh, I think you can do this by roll call, right, council? Whatever you do. Or by or voice vote is fine. We can do a voice vote. I will be abstaining. Uh, well, I guess let's do a roll call because I'm going to be abstaining because I wasn't here. So go have a roll call, please. Sure. Engelhardt? Abstaining. Oh, sorry, abstaining. That's right. <clears throat> Mr. Johnston? Yes. Mr. Long? Yes. Mr. Parker? Yes. Ms. Rossetti? Yes. Ms. Tilly? Yes. Okay. And I'm saying uh, approval of minutes for December 12th, Council Executive Session. Same if we have a motion. Long removed. Tilly, second. Roll we'll call, please. Ms. Engel? Abstain. Mr. Johnston? Yes. Mr. Long? Yes. Mr. Parker? Yes. Ms. Rossetti? Yes. Ms. Tilly? Yes. And I'm standing as well. Approval of minutes for December 16th, Council Special Meeting. I have a motion. Long move. Tilly, I'll second. Roll call, please. Senator Hart? Abstain. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Johnston? Yes. Mr. Long? Yes. Mr. Parker? Yes. Ms. Rossetti? Yes. Ms. Tilly? Yes. And I'm standing. Consent agenda. Um, uh, Administrator, can you please, or I should say clerk at this point, can you please read the title of the consent agenda? <clears throat> yeah, consent agenda, uh, number one, uh, you want me to read each one? Man? The title, oh, yes, okay. please. Uh, resolution 2023-38, support a proposed Senate bill number 861, allowing municipalities to conduct annual event for open burning, uh, spelling there, of Christmas tree. Resolution 2023-39, reappointing uh, Stephen Eckert and Alan Unka Gelter as Deputy Fire Marshals for 2023. And Resolution 2023-40, refund a street opening permit bond fee for Robert Fjord. Does anybody want anything taken off the consent agenda? Um, Mayor Caro, I would request that 2023-38 be pulled for discussion. Okay. I was going to do the same, please. Oh, okay. No. All right. Uh, can I have a motion and a second for resolutions two and three on the consent agenda? Long move. Chilly, a second. Uh, roll call vote, please. Ms. Engelhart? Yes. Mr. Johnston? Yes. Mr. Long? Yes. Mr. Parker? Yes. Ms. Rossetti? Yes. Ms. Tilly? Yes. Discussion for resolution 2023-38. Can I have a motion? Long move. Can I have a second? Chilly, a second. Discussion? Is Angle Hart or Ms. Rossetti? Um, Go first, Liz. Sure, thank you. No, I just wanted to bring up, um, I wanted to better understand the reasoning behind that. I mean, I read through the resolution saying that we don't want to be wasting money um, bringing trees to landfills. I'm just wondering, um, you know, burning trees releases the carbon back into the atmosphere, which will impact uh, the greenhouse gases. We've been having issues with uh, historic flooding recently, climate change. And I'm just wondering why we would back that versus uh, trying to support something such as composting or recycling the trees instead. If anyone has any insight, I would appreciate. Ms. Ms. Engelhart? Yeah, sure. I, I think I have a little insight. I'm a, a lead accredited professional, so I, I have a little bit of background in sustainability. 
And I just wanted to bring to everybody's attention what exactly what Liz said. The biggest issue is that burning trees, as you know, trees collect our carbon uh, you know, dioxide. And the, the trees, um, uh, when they're burned, releases that carbon um, uh, right back into the air. So all the carbon that's collected as, uh, during the tree's life, it kind of is a waste bin because now you're putting it right back into the air where you don't want it. But um, burying trees, like Liz is asking um, about, uh, that's just as bad. In fact, it's even worse. Um, the amount of carbon, um, it, it becomes, um, it becomes a, 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 a the, there's, there's not enough bacteria in the ground to kind of uh, decompose the trees that way. Um, so, um, and in addition, conifer needles, when they're, when they're burned, they're very um, irritating, toxic, and quite a nuisance. The mulching, in, in other words, mulching is the best way by far, and this is, uh, uh, a, a general um, consensus by I looked I, I confirmed this with Sierra Club and Earth.org and a couple other um, items and whenever I write um, uh, specifications for construction sites, there's you know there's uh, DEP has pretty strict laws about no burning and that's why mulching is the best way. Um, the the real Christmas trees are best, by the way, you want to go to your, like a local farm. We have beautiful farms in Hunter County. That's what we're known for. Um, and, you know, a normal Christmas tree has about a 3.5 um, uh, kilograms of carbon dioxide. But when, and, and it's the same if you're um, disposing them in like a wood chip or like a, a mulch. Um, the, when they, when they end up in those landfills, like I mentioned, the carbon footprint actually come, is like fourfold. It becomes 16. Um, uh, so it's the methane gases that are produced when the tree is buried. That's the problem. But, you know, everybody says, okay, well, maybe I'm going to get an artificial tree next year. And I would love that too. I hated the, all the needles falling on my, in my living room. Um, but plastic trees are, are just as, um, if not more, environmentally unfriendly. Um, the carbon result for, for, for fake trees is like 40 kilograms. So, the, and, and there's also, I, I was, I was at, I was at Walmart over the weekend and there was a lady right in front of me buying a, a, an artificial tree for sale in front line in front of me. I didn't say anything to her, but, and those sales are really, really tempting, but all of those trees are like built in China and they're sent over and all the carbon emissions just to get them here and move them around is even worse. So the best solution is a local tree from a local place. The, 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 the um, history of this particular resolution that we've been asked to review, and, and it's not unusual for us to be requested to support resolutions from other towns. In this case, Clinton and Highbridge and Union and some of our other very good neighbors in Hunterton and Warren counties, they have traditions where they burn their Christmas trees. In the last few years, they burned pallets essentially um, to kind of keep that tradition up. Um, but and and there's a state senator out of the 23rd who is sponsoring this bill. And we've been this what if if we if we support this resolution, it's supporting that bill that the that the um, state senator has put forth. Um, you know, there's a reason why burning is legal in New Jersey and that we have some of the strongest environmental laws next to California in the whole country. And, and frankly, I know I've been talking a while. The, there's a huge issue right now in town related to our mulch piles, the, the, um, the DEP. And I think it would be, frankly, a lot better if we had spent all this time that I was talking, um, discussing, encouraging, and banning together with our municipality, our neighboring municipalities, with our county to aggressively lobby against the state DP regulations that are overzealous, their timeline is overzealous and their financial burden is really overzealous on all the municipalities that they've put in place for us to um, build enclosed facilities to house our mulch that we're gonna have to do within 12 months. That's a huge financial burden that the state has put on small municipalities like us and everywhere else in the county. So to be frankly, 
bothered and waste our time with something that is so environmentally unfriendly. And, and we, I would encourage us to vote against this and then let's get on the stuff that's really important, like dealing with these uh, really overzealous regulations from the DEP. So that's where I encourage my fellow council members to turn this down for that reason. And I hope we can get on to the more important stuff, like trying to figure out how we're going to deal with these other DEP regulations in, the, in less than 12 months. Thank you. Any other question? Anybody have an appetite to approve this? So can I just ask a question? So are, are you, I'm just trying to understand what you and Liz are saying, and I hear what you're but are you saying that you want to turn this down because it's a burning as opposed to motion? Is that what you're saying? Yes, okay. we could not okay. be burning Christmas trees, period. Okay. I understand. <laughs> I'm just trying to say you just want to you want to go to multi, so you want to turn this down mm -hmm. and go to go back and, and have it mulch. Is that what it's usually well, known as mulching? This is yes. for supporting supporting the notes for that's, that's not on the books yet. Yeah. Um, it's not a matter of it's not going to happen. Yes, yeah. yeah. okay. no, it's not, nothing to do with Flemington. Okay. It's other things. Just trying to follow her. Just, and I'm sorry if I didn't make that. Business, 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 business legislation. Yeah. All right. So I'm going to call the vote. A no vote would not put out a resolution of support. So right. can you please call the roll? Yeah. Um, Ms. Engelhart. No. Mr. Johnston. No. Mr. Long? No. Mr. Parker? No. Ms. Rossetti? No. Ms. Tilly? No. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, moving on to the regular agenda, we have resolution appointing uh, Councilman Parker to the FCP Board of Trustees for 2023. This is a vote according to our ordinance of the entire governing body, including the mayor, which is very unusual. Um, can I have a motion and a second, please? Long move. Jilly, I'll second. Can I have a roll call, please? Ms. Engelhart? Yes. Mr. Johnson? Yes. Mr. Long? Yes. Mr. Parker? Yes. Ms. Rossetti? Yes. Ms. Tilly? Yes. <laughs> I'm going to say yes to something. <laughs> I apologize for the rest I get the vote. Wait, oh, okay. I need to vote on this. I'm sorry. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Uh, and forgive me, uh, that was 2023-41. Uh, that's uh, not on there. I apologize. Thank you. 2023. Next one is 42. Even though it says 28? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Got it. No, actually, the next one is 28 because that was... Uh... From the other... No, it's not. It is... Uh, we have to renumber. It's 43. It's 43? Yes, 43. Okay, so that was 2023-42 passed unanimously. Can I have a, a motion in a second for item 2023-43 appointing Remy to mm -hmm. Burnick? As a Flemington Borough Engineer 2023. Long with second. Can the roll call, please? Which I don't vote on. Ms. Engelhart? Yes. Mr. Johnston? Yes. Mr. Long? Yes. Mr. Parker? Yes. Ms. Rossetti? Yes. Ms. Tilly? Yes. Thank you. Um, work session. We have a work session tonight. We're going to be um, we're going to be talking about a lot of public business going forward in the work sessions before they actually come to the council at ordinances. Um, so um, we have two tonight. One is the floodplain management ordinance, which uh, after Hurricane Ida, uh, FEMA um, changed their, their regs and asked the states to adopt, which the state of New Jersey did. Uh, the state of New Jersey DEP put this towns on a timetable to uh, get a new ordinance that follows their new regulations approved. That timetable actually was supposed to be done last year. We did not uh, meet that. Um, uh, Jerry Harris um, did update our created an updated version. It's about 30, 30, 35 pages long, very detailed. Um, and um, one of the things that are in there is that the towns by law, we were supposed to actually have a floodplain manager years ago who's certified by the state. Um, this town has not had a floodplain manager who's supposed to be checking on site plans and approvals um, at the time that uh, they apply for um, uh, a permit. So for, for example, if, and I mentioned this to the council president today, the council president, if he lived in a floodplain and he wanted to replace his deck uh, and he goes to the construction office for a permit, um, the construction officer would uh, note that he's in the floodplain and then 
um, it would be sent to the floodplain manager by law to, for review to make sure that he's following the new regulations. Um, the current ordinance as drafted by Mr. Harris um, does not have a fee schedule um, as part of that um, ordinance. Most municipalities that are passing these create a fee schedule so that the taxpayers at large are not paying for people's private um, uh, approvals, just like a construction permit. So um, we're gonna be tweaking that ordinance. My plan right now is that you all get this ordinance tomorrow, uh, which will give you a couple of weeks to review it before it's introduced on um, at the next meeting. And uh, it's already at the planning board look, being looked at somewhere in the next few days, hopefully. Yes, Mr. Can you recommend Wednesday? Get it on Wednesday the is fine. Planning board. That gives them tomorrow night. Okay, so the, so oh. that's fine. So you can get it to the council on okay. Wednesday. That's fine. I'm sorry, can I interrupt? I thought the first reading has to be here and then the second reading has to be in planning board. So wouldn't it be, we have a meeting on the 24th. Right, so that's the intention to have it introduced. Right. So I, 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 I told Eileen to put it on our agenda for the 24th. Okay. That was okay. So so that's fine. And and the intention is that in the next couple of days, our new engineer who happens to have a cadre of floodplain managers on staff, um, including, I believe, somebody in Somerville who handles Central Jersey, um, will provide us with some ideas of um, a fee schedule. I can tell you that in Middlesex Borough, the ordinance that I did for them. Uh, before I retired this spring, um, a simple review. And Middlesex Borough is like 80% floodplain. It's gotten very little, maybe 85%. Um, so everybody had to pay $50 when they came to the construction office just to find out if they were in the floodplain or not. And then if they were, then it was a $300 application fee to have it reviewed. Um, I asked um, Remington Vernick that should they get this, this gig, which you uh, graciously gave them tonight, that they put some kind of cap also on, especially for small homeowners and small businesses um, who are in the floodplain to, you know, not have a, a, a cumbersome um, fee to have it reviewed. Um, so I, you know, I can try to answer any questions tonight or we can, yes, Mr. Harris. Uh, uh, um, because- uh, Is Mr. Jerry Harris on? Could, no, Mr. Harris couldn't oh, attend. Okay. No, he let me know just that uh, for Can I read a couple notes that he had? Sure, oh, please. Okay. okay. Um, so this is mandatory. Uh, the FEMA, um, FEMA has reviewed the current New Jersey model of flood damage prevention ordinance. And FEMA directed the uh, New Jersey Department of Environmental Protection uh, model ordinance transition to a FEMA approved version that coordinates the state building codes enforced by local construction officials. Um, the uh, DEP has revised its flood damage prevention ordinance and Hunter County has been selected for a mandatory countywide adoption. Uh, a revised borough flood damage prevention ordinance has been prepared using mandatory uh, DEP uh, riv riverine, riverine. riverine mm -hmm. model ordinance. So the timeline, um, the initial draft uh, was sent December 2nd, uh, comments from uh, the DEP and FEMA uh, December 6th. The revised draft for council and planning board review uh, was today. Uh, this starts the, the process. We already sent it to the planning board for, uh, for, for their agenda. Um, introduction on January 23rd and, um, and hopefully adoption uh, on February 13th. Um, that meets the deadline of February 15th of when we have to have this in place. Uh, and yeah, there were a couple sections here. Um, as you mentioned, uh, designation of a floodplain administrator. Um, also, uh, hardship definition, uh, designation of a party to handle variances and hardships um, for those that do find they're in uh, the floodplain, and uh, designation of optional higher penalties and standards, uh, which is allowed for, for municipalities. I haven't seen anyone choose that, but it is for those who want to, to uh, do that, and that's it. So again, um, all of you will get it Wednesday. Please take your time trying to understand it. It's really complicated um, stuff. Uh, I've done the floodplain management training twice um, just to get a handle on understanding the language in these ordinances. And uh, I've chosen not to sit for the exam because 
it's just so hard. <laughs> this is a very complicated topic. So, um, so that will be on the agenda for introduction at our next meeting. And as Michael said, it's mandatory. We don't have a choice, um, but uh, there are some some choices within that. So, and I will be getting it amended at some point so that you can all take a look at the schedule for applicants, you know, within the floodplain for home improvements or business improvements, additions, et cetera. Um, the second thing on- I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, so the, okay. the flood thing that the administrator, the flood administrator, is that something that's an existing position or is that going to be a new position? In other words, is someone that's currently on staff going to have that position or is that a new position that we have to- we have to recruit. So, so the floodplain administrator is a certified floodplain manager by law, and it by under the DEP ordinance, they allow it to be a mayor and then designate out or a construction code officer who designates it out. Um, we don't have anybody here who is certified. So most municipalities um, hire somebody within a, you know an engineering firm that specializes in this. Remington Vernick has two or four or five. Floodplain managers that are certified on their staff. So I, you know, we'll, so they're going to take this. I, so it's it's actually in the ordinance. It's listed as Jeff Klein. Okay. It's our construction officer who will be looking at the stuff, but he will not be the floodplain administrator because there is a legal burden on the floodplain administrator to make the right calls. If they screw up, it's like sure. on them. Yeah. So sure. nobody wants. That's why I didn't take the test. Sure. So okay, <laughs> Ms. Tilly. If we have questions on the information that we're given, are we able to, who do we contact? Are we able to contact? I'm, I'm going to ask um, Remington Vernick's um, floodplain administrator or Mr. Harris to be available for the introduction of this, just to answer questions and introduction, Perfect. not even the public hearing. Okay. It's so complicated. Okay, thank and you. the work session, they're going to come here and talk to us. Correct. Right. Well, when, you, we introduce the, when we introduce the ordinance, Maybe we'll have a presentation. They will be here or on Zoom, okay. absolutely. Okay. Again, if we have if we have any questions between now and next time, can we just feel free to call Jerry since he's on our... Uh, um, I would prefer you to hold off because if you have a question, everybody has a question, and I think it's better for the public to hear all the questions and let Jerry or Remington Vernick answer them in public for the whole council. Because if you were asking it, Mr. Long probably wants to know, Ms. Tilly probably wants to know. So I would just ask everybody to hold their questions until we have that presentation to try to get a full understanding. Mm -hmm. um, if you want to call me, I speak this stuff pretty fluently. I can give it my best shot. Um, so we've got 10 years of flood experience and, but I don't want to, yeah, can, yeah, I'll just mention, we do have a floodplain ordinance, but this will radically change it, make it much more powerful. So, um, but we'll get down on Wednesday. Yeah. We'll get, we'll get the, this is going to be in January, what, what are they going the to introduction be? will be yeah. at our next meeting on January 23rd. Okay. Okay. And we'll have somebody here from one of the engineering firms to answer questions that you guys collect. And then it'll be 13th. the 13th of February will be the public hearing. Okay. Uh, and it'll get you a second bite of the apple to ask questions as well. Um, yeah, FEMA is really, I think after FIDA, they had it with New Jersey um, because we've let it be applied so badly in the state. So anything okay. else on this ordinance? Ms. Rossetti, anything? Okay. Um, okay, the other thing for the work session to discuss is the cannabis licensing. Um, it's come to my attention that some folks are desirous of opening up our current ordinance that allows dispensaries um, in some of the downtown areas as well as the highways to allow it to uh, those same sites that have dispensaries to be allowed to also sell recreational marijuana and to then also change and not allow them to have dispensaries or recreational marijuana stores in the downtown area, and also to amend the ordinance to require anybody going to these dispensaries or recreational uh, sales stores to have an appointment um, so that the parking lots are not flooded with cars because they are in shopping centers with other stores. So having said all of that, I will open this the discussion and see if you all are willing to entertain the introduction of an ordinance um, changing changing 
those things about the current ordinance and also allowing a, a fee schedule uh, with that. I'm sorry. Uh, our, it's, it, let me clarify. The current ordinance allows two locations. We're not expanding that, correct? The current, well, the current ordinance allows two locations for mm -hmm. dispensary purposes only. And it allows them um, in our certain business districts, in, including the artisan district and downtown business area. Um, it does not allow them near uh, residential areas. Um, and we currently have one ready for final approval, and the other one, I believe, is working towards licensing or approval, both out on the highway. I, per, I, I, I recall when we were asked to review this ordinance. Um, on the planning board level, because mm -hmm. you know the ordinances, um, anything related to land use um, gets passed back and forth, you know, once. Um, and we only, you know, we only give our uh, comments and advice. We're not, uh, we don't have any type of power other than just giving um, our advice back to the council. Um, there were several planning board members that I recall that did not care for locations in the artist district or in the two DD districts. Um, we had preferred to keep them um, highway um, because in the case of our small town, the DB districts are, there's a lot of residents that live in the DB districts. Um, and that's my, still my personal opinion. I can't speak for the planning. So getting up this ordinance would allow that bite of the apple to take those. Yeah, and I don't, I, I, I don't, yeah, that's, that's what I'm going at. It's like, can we change things you can. that way? So to their approved, one is, is uh, over at the shops at Flemington and the other right. one looks like it's going to go over right. at the plaza where, right. um, by Wendy's. By Wendy's, right. yeah. Um, that being said, one of the things that I did learn um, in the last few months is there is a, um, it's use on a site is not allowed right now. You know, like when you go to buy the in Jersey, that's stable. Yeah, I, I realize that, but there is a need apparently for people, especially people that are in uh, apartments who don't have the privacy of their own home where um, a lot of apartments and landlords don't, don't allow cannabis in uh, on site because it's a nuisance to neighbors. So there is um, a a need for, from what I understand, and and I'm, I'm I admit I'm naive to the to it. I never smoked pot in my life, so I have no idea. <laughs> but um, true. Um, but the from what I understand, that is an issue, especially for people that need me medical marijuana. Um, if you're having to drive somewhere, that is an issue. So I eventually from what I understand and again this would be something we would address maybe in a even later you know uh ordinance change from what I understand eventually they may be um allowing uh this the state may be allowing for actual like use areas where you go there just to smoke or or, or can, can consume cannabis specifically for medical purposes um and I'm certainly not against that um, but um, especially if that needs to be located somewhere where it's within walkable distance to, uh, you know, two residences. But as far as the sales go, um, I'd like to see it, number one, be kept to um, the, the highway retail, I see Route 12 and, and Route 31 and, and, and 202 Circle um, uh, and the shops. Um, and... Um, and other than that, I think that we have an opportunity here to collect fees, and I think we should. And I want to thank Mike, because mm -hmm. Mike was the one that um, had, I think, brought this to at least my attention um, late last year, that we have this opportunity now, and we should grab it while we can. Well, let me just say this real quick. So I, you know, I travel a lot. So I've been to California, I've been to Colorado, I've been to places where 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 cannabis is, is very legal, right? Mm -hmm. um, and in terms of apartment buildings and things like that, cannabis comes in all different types. It's not necessarily smoking their gummies, there's, there's chocolate, et cetera. So that's that's really not anything that we need to concern ourselves about. Um, and in terms of open areas, I've never seen an open area in any of these states. I've never seen that happen. I mean, I'm not saying that I, maybe it does exist. I've just not seen it. Um, th that doesn't mean that people don't go to parks and et cetera, et cetera, and do it. But it, but the point of it is, I've never seen an area that's designated for 
the class markers and things like that. And, and you have to think about it. I mean, it sounds logical because there's children around. Yeah. So you wouldn't, I mean, that's not something that you would want to have near a high school or elementary school or junior high school. Um, and so that's why people typically, if they're going to smoke, they smoke in their houses. <clears throat> but typ typically people will go to other means such as chocolates and gummies and things like that. So, uh, yeah, you know. thanks, honey. I wanted to also kind of um, kind of going with, with Susan's kind of line of thought. As far as, you know, when we did this uh, ordinance first, I, I remember kind of thinking, well, Flubby's really small. And when you say, I forget, honestly, the fee. Um, I don't know if it was the state or there's something we decided. State law. State. So are you talking? Are you talking about where? How far to a residential? From a residential? Yes, I, I yeah, that's a state law. State. Yeah. Okay. State. So we, I mean, it's kind of like somewhat pointless to even allow it in yeah. those two districts because mm -hmm. it's so close. Yeah. Anyway. It's so close. Mm -hmm. And I think there was consensus, absolutely, that um, the highway retail is probably more suitable for this. Um, and as far as like open use, um, like like a like a weed garden or something, like I I think that's kind of strange. No, it, 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 the way that it was described was it was not outside at all. It was in like you go to a like a retail store. Like, yeah, to, okay. yeah they don't, I, I mean, yeah, I think, I, yeah. It's like a Amsterdam is where it exists, where you can go in and you can smoke pot and order a beer, right? I mean, that's I don't know. I don't know. Really if we, I don't know if we see funny for you to come and answer that. No, no, that's what I'm saying. I don't, I, the only place I know that exists is someplace like Amsterdam. I don't know if it exists in the United States. Well, you never The police are very interested in this conversation with the officers. Young people. Well, yeah, they know what they're going to do. This is a fairly new thing going on in this state, and I think people are. Like you said, it, it seems like people are pretty discreet no, about their usage. And, and I've never seen um, any pot uh, cannabis dispensary in a neighborhood. It's I always in a shopping I center. It. I smell it. Well, you might smell it, but, but, but the point is they never sell it in no. a no. dispensary. It's never in a neighborhood. It's always in a shopping right. center. Right. Always. Right. And, they, yeah. and some of the shopping centers, they just build themselves and, and, and things like that. But you are right in terms about the parking because that can become a nightmare. So if they do have to do, I, I do believe that um, um, I, 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 the reason I know all of this is because I worked with, a, with an agency and I I'll just leave that alone. But I know about a lot of this. But the parking does become an issue because there's so many cars to come in and out at a time, and typically there and typically you have to make an appointment to go in or they will deliver. So, so you would support you would support having appointments. Absolutely. That's the only way it's gonna work. Yeah. Only way it's gonna work. I'm telling you, it's gonna be a nightmare. Yeah, so you in one second. Are you are you all done on the side? Yeah. Actually, well, I, I'm not just from a planning standpoint. We we definitely discussed both of those locations and there was ample parking that for that type of use. Right. So and then the traffic engineer had actually had given us some some like actual numbers and feedback on that issue so from the planning board standpoint at least for aunt mary's um there was no concerns about parking Aunt mary's parking lot is very yeah. large yeah and the other one has an ample but, parking too right now right so okay. i'm still going to warn you it's not about just Flemington because people from raritan are coming people from new hope really are coming people from princeton are coming. i'm just telling you I'm I'm just, mr johnson <laughs> <laughs> Hey, yeah, I don't think the appointment will curb the parking issues. Um, I think it's something we need to look at. Okay. Are you do you object to the idea of appointments? You do. Yeah. Okay. Um, any 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 anything you want to add to that? Or no. do you want to just tell you any comments? You don't have to feel pressure to have comments, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I in previous discussions, I know. You know, there was never any thought about appointments, but in hearing it, I think that's definitely I would be pro appointment. Okay. Um, Ms. Rosetta, do you have any comments you want to weigh in? 
Um, I don't have too much to add. I don't think I'm necessarily pro or, or against appointments. I, I don't see a problem with appointments if it is an issue. I mean, if we have ample parking, maybe it's not necessary, but it's something we could address if it becomes an issue, but I'm also not against appointments either. Um, I think, um, you know, I think it would come down to how much revenue are we potentially bringing in and would appointments like deter some people who are from out of town who maybe didn't realize they needed an appointment. You know, that would be my only concern about appointments, but beyond that, I certainly don't want overcrowding in parking lots. I saw, um, this is kind of a little off topic, but I saw something about a drive-through dispensary. I don't know if that's something that could be done at any of these locations or not. And I mean, that's not really our decision, but just, just a thought I have, <laughs> so that's it. Okay. I just want to add that planning board reviews parking needs for every site application and this because um, because of the nature of it is required to go to the planning board anyway. So we would be reviewing this anyway. So if there wasn't ample parking or if we didn't feel there was ample parking, we would be addressing that during the site plan anyway. So I don't necessarily think the appointments or the parking is the issue so much as we want to grab these fees. Um, and the location. Okay, so it sounds like the council is supportive of changing the ordinance to allow recreational sales. Yes. So what it sounds like. Yes, yes. Um, it sounds like the council is supportive of adding additional fees. Um, yes. So I just want to give a quick poll of the council as to whether or not you want to start with uh, appointments, or you want to see how it goes, and we can always amend the ordinance later. Um, so I'm just going to start with Ms. Tilly. Appointments or no appointments? Appointments. Uh, Mr. Johnston is no appointments, right? Mr. Long. I'm going to say no appointments. Let me see how this goes. Okay. Mr. Well, Mr. Parker, I'm sorry. I'm doing this from experience. Appointments. Uh, okay. Ms. Uh, Engelhardt. Um, I'd say no appointments. And Ms. Rosetti. I would say no, but with the caveat that we could change it if need be. Okay, so the notes have it for now, and then we'll revisit. Uh, so it's actually it's three to three, right? One, two. Was that three to three? One, no, two, three. Yeah, four, no, two. I was right the first time. Okay, so all right, so um, Mr. Humphrey, if you want to do an introduction of an ordinance at our next meeting, um, I just want to correct something. Um, right now, the ordinance says that there could be two dispensary slash retail environments and two cultivation locations, um, including micro cultivation. There is no definition as to what that would be. Just say that. Second, we have no fee attached to an annual license or an application. So that could be. Yeah, that's, I think there's absolute appetite for that. Um, so, and I think we also want to amend it to take out any distribution inside the Artisan Village Artisan District or the Downtown Business District. Absolutely. Take that out as well. Keep, keep it to Keep it to class five, and yeah, yep. we'll, yeah, we'll grab that. And make sure it's it's yep. in order. So if you wanna if you wanna circulate a draft ordinance to the council, um, you know, prior to introduction, that'd be great. Anything else on this issue? Uh, if not, we're opening up public comment number two. Uh, to the public, if anybody has any comments um, on the work session or any other matter. If not, anybody online? I can't tell because I don't know how to do this. No. Thank you. If anyone online wants to speak, please raise your oh, hand. I could do that. <laughs> okay. Um, can I have a motion uh, and a second to uh, pay the bills in the amount of 448000 $549.70. Tilly Elbows. Engelhardt seconds. Uh, can I have a roll call, please? Ms. Engelhardt. Yes. Mr. Johnston. Yes. Mr. Long. Yes. Mr. Parker. Yes. Ms. Rossetti. Yes. Ms. Tilly. Yes. Thank you. Uh, having no other business tonight, can I have a motion to adjourn? Can I add uh, just uh, I know that yeah. our prior agendas, we always had a, uh, a calculator report. Is that something that'll be in a new agenda? Council member's report? I mean, sorry, sorry, sorry. Sorry. Sorry report. Oh, sorry. Um, do you want to do a report, Mr. Corsini? Up to you. I mean, <laughs> I don't know if that's, I think it's something we need. I to think, be I don't think it'll be on the agenda. I don't think if we ask him to do something, then 
I don't think it needs to be a standing item on the agenda. I think we ask you to report on something. And I do want to see the administrator report every every two weeks as we should know we have up to. We just just adding in. We do it on the planning board. We actually have it on the agenda. We have to make I've never seen that in a council meeting or a work meeting. Just saying that's how we bodies, but I think. If Mr. Cors Mr. Corsini is charged with something, then he'll then we'll do it as old business and he'll follow up mm -hmm. on old business. Whatever you guys want. He'll be old business. <laughs> yeah, that's all it's been said, man. <laughs> uh, if you haven't met Mr. Corsini, I encourage you to meet him. Um, please, it's really off light. And I hope you'll enjoy him. Did everybody down on this far end get a chance to look at the um, library audit? Do you want to take a couple minutes? No, I did not. So do you want a motion to uh, I need a motion to adjourn? I do. All in favor. Aye. Thank you. All right. Aye. 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 Aye.